There is a bit of the scary in this evening's text, a bit of the frightening and perhaps a bit of the spooky. You could read it that way. You do not know when the master of the house will come. Therefore, keep awake. <laughs> and so before we go any further, I have to address the sermon title, Gremlin God. I was in high school when the movie Gremlins came out, and it didn't have the same frightening impact on me that it had on my colleague, Elisa Joyce. She was eight or nine when that movie came out, and she found it terrifying. And so when I was talking to her this week about the sermon, she said, what is up with that sermon title? So I thought I should address it early on so that you didn't have to be nervous. So in titling tonight's offering, Gremlin God, I don't mean to suggest at all that God is a demon. I really don't. Or that God means us harm, because I don't think God does. My angle on gremlins that tracks with my understanding of God is we think we know what we're getting in the God we think we know. But we don't know this God. We do not know this God. When the little boy in the movie received the furry gizmo, how many of you all saw gremlins? Okay. So remember, gizmo was so cute, big eyes big ears, very fluffy. When that kid got gizmo, he thought he knew what he was getting, but he had no idea what that creature would become if it got wet. Remember? Watch the movie if you haven't. Jim, watch the movie. We don't know this God. We, we get very familiar with God, right? You know, Jesus is my homeboy and all these kinds of t-shirts. And while I know what they're getting at, you know, Jesus is a friend of mine, sayings like Jesus is my homeboy boxes God in and it suggests that we know the God that we don't know. We think we've got God all figured out and we just don't. We think God plays by our rules, but God doesn't. We think God does what we want done in the ways we imagine it should get done, but there are new rules and big surprises in store with God. With God, we think we know what's in the box, but God in the flesh is God out of the box. You do not know when the master of the house will come. Therefore, keep awake. These words, rather than striking fear in our hearts, might rather send chills down our spines, but chills of anticipation for this God who is other than we can imagine. Chills of anticipation like we used to get in the weeks leading up to Christmas. When I was eight or nine, I could barely contain myself the entire month of December. Can you remember what it felt like to keep awake with that sort of longing. How many of you stayed up all night Christmas Eve? That is, is what we're after. That sort of excitement, that chilly, spine-tingly anticipation, that is where the gospel writer suggests we should live, in spine-chilling anticipation of God's advent, God's arrival. As Jim said earlier, this Sunday, is the beginning of a new church year. If I had some confetti, I'd throw it on you. It's like, Happy New Year! And we kick off with chills all down our spines in anticipation of the God who is on the way. It's the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the waiting season. And yes, we begin the equivalent of our new year, waiting. Four Sundays of preparation for a baby king who is in the flesh, out of the box, extraordinary. We don't know what we're gonna get, but we know God showing up won't be anything like what we expect. It's so perfect, really. It's, it's perfect that our celebration of Jesus' birth falls at the end of the year. Many of us become more reflective at the end of the year. We look back and we ponder. We look back and we review. What can we celebrate and what shall we lament? No doubt we each have both joys and sorrows. And Mark's gospel points us tonight in the direction of our sorrow. 
He writes, in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. Mark points us towards sorrow and simultaneously towards hope because he also writes, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. God in the flesh is God out of the box. Mark goes on to say, then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Surely we can point to suffering in our own lives and in our world that mimics what Mark is here describing, injustice in this country and other countries, ongoing loss of human life in this country and other countries, racism, homelessness, poverty, incivility, unemployment. It can feel like the end times are upon us, like the apocalypse is here, like the sun and the moon are dark and the stars will start falling from the sky any moment. But, Mark writes, when it feels that way, when it feels as if the powers in heaven will be shaken, then the powers in heaven come all the way down here. When you see these things taking place, be hopeful because you know that God is near at the very gates. <laughs> we think we know what we're getting in the God we think we know, but we don't know this God. God in the flesh is God out of the box. The Gospel of Mark encourages us, reminds us, warns us, in fact, to keep awake. For you do not know this God. You do not know when the master of the house will come. Keep awake. God will surprise you. Keep awake. Your spine will begin to tingle. Keep awake. You don't know how this out-of-the-box God will show up. When Jesus came, many were looking for a king a military leader, a powerful ruler, not a helpless baby, not a person willing to go to his death to prove his love, but God in the flesh is God out of the box. This God will surprise you. Mark's gospel is about sticking with this God. It's about following the unpredictable God to unexpected places. In a little more than four weeks, it will be Christmas. And we think we know what we're waiting for. We think we know what we're gonna get. That's why I think most of us aren't excited about Christmas anymore. We think we know what's in the box. But watch for God to show up in unexpected ways and unexpected places and unexpected people. If you keep awake, you just might be surprised at what you see. What does it look like now for us who are all grown up and wait through the night for the gift of an out-of-the-box God? What does it look like now in our comfortable, grown-up lives to let our spines tingle and our heartbeats quicken with anticipation for Christmas, for christ must? God overwhelms the powers of heaven and earth to get here and be here with us. Sun, moon, and stars shift because God is coming. That advent, that arrival alters the world. God beats back heaven and earth to become human like us. In this heightened season of joy, expectation, hope, and yes, even sorrow. God comes to experience all that being human entails. These next four weeks are our chance to wake up and be alert. 
We think we know what is in the box marked God, but the good news of Mark's gospel says we have no idea. The cute baby that we're waiting for is not what we might expect. We don't have him all figured out, and that should excite us, make us hopeful, give us joy. Be for us a real Christmas package, a real present that comes in an unexpected way. And so may this Advent be for us all a time of waking up, a time of becoming followers of an out-of-the-box God. Keep awake. Enjoy the tingle. Christmas is coming. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen.